What's happening? I'm Brian Tong, and welcome to the Apple Bite. It's all the good and bad inside the world of Apple, so let's get to the show, including a special visit to Macworld 2012. Now, our lead story might not be the sexiest to start off with, but it's important. After the New York Times published an extensive story on the working conditions at Foxconn, one of Apple's largest manufacturing partners. It's not a pretty picture with harsh working conditions, underage workers, people clocking in 60 hour plus weeks, and a factory explosion in May that killed four people and injured 18. Now, Apple's not the only major company who uses Foxconn. Others like IBM, HP, and Lenovo also have their products built there. The Big A has addressed some of the issues and has audits with its suppliers, but the takeaway here is that we really need to be aware of how these products that we purchase are being produced. Just think about it, if Apple had 50% of all iPhones come out of their factories defective, you know they would immediately make changes. And in light of their record earnings and the amount of products they pump out, they can also make changes in the way their products are made, and they really need to address this again. Now, I'm the first person who loves his tech, but it's worth taking back a step to bring this to your attention, and really, it's your move now, Apple. Now, we talked about those earnings, and it was another Apple best quarter ever for Q1 of 2012, posting revenue over $43 billion and a net quarterly profit of over $13 billion. Highlights from the announcements included a record 15.4 million iPads sold, and CEO Tim Cook said the company hadn't seen any slowdown in iPad sales after the introduction of the Kindle Fire. Ooh, burn. Now, a record 37 million plus iPhones were sold, and that hobby of theirs, the Apple TV, it sold 1.4 million units in Q1 of 2012. Apple sold 2.8 million in all of 2011. All right, guys, we know that Macworld is happening just down the street, so we wanted to send my twin brother to give you the report on the floor. All right, Brian, we are here on the show floor at Moscone Center. This is Macworld 2012. They like to call it Macworld iWorld. So what we're going to do is we looked around to try and find out what is some of the hottest stuff here today. This is Sydney. Uh, this is an iOS recharge station for four. So as you can see, you can fully recharge up to four devices at once. Simultaneously, without compromise, each port provides you 2.1 amps. So it's a full recharge. So the, the 2.1 amps is going to enable, enable it to be a faster charge. You also have this kind of nice stack where you could fit, what, about three iPads and then an additional device? Definitely. You can fit three iPads, but you can recharge up to four at the same time. And then who do you think this is really going to target specifically? Yeah, we're looking at not only households. Uh, we chose four ports for our family devices, but you're looking at work offices, um, hospitality settings, um, educational, healthcare. Everyone's starting to incorporate um, tablet use, so we're really targeting all those. All right, at Macworld also, we like to find friends and family. Zach, you had some interesting feedback about yeah, our show. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a little too scatological, you know. What I do think you mean? there are too many poop jokes, you know. Too many poop and jokes. Poop, farts, all that stuff. So he likes I mean, poop yeah, jokes. But I'm still watching it. No, I don't know. I don't like poop jokes. You know, that's that's when I want to fast forward. Uh, but I am a fan, you know. Some of us over 50 people watch watch the wackiness. This is a special made system to add lenses to your iPhone. It comes with a case and this handle. Within the handle are housed the two lenses. Oh, this is a magic trick you got going on here. <laughs> That's right. The century wide angle lens is right there. And on the bottom part uh -oh. is the fisheye lens. That's one everybody likes to see. All right, now this is the iPro lens. How much does this retail for? Right now, currently with everything that includes the case, the handle, the two lenses, $199. And then you guys just announced a new telephoto lens, right? right. That like kind of doubles the image. Just today, we announced our brand new two times tele extender. Hey. Thank you for that. I mount my Mac all the time. So uh, these will be released in mid-February. We announced them at CES. Um, they feature integrated ports. So you've got your mini display port and USB pass-through right here. And we've got a nice rubberized cradle. Uh, and the whole unit ships just as this. You pull it out of the box, it's ready to go, drop it down, connect your power and your two accessories, and you've got yourself a docking station. Now, how much is it going to retail for? Uh, these are going to start at 55 for the 11 inch models and go up to 60 for the 13 inch models. I just like them a lot because they're really clean in how they look. That's, I mean, that's, that's the best part about them. Now, also, I didn't, I didn't know you guys had this, but the Click, tell me about this, because this is probably another really hot design product from you guys. Uh, it's called the Click. It joins Apple's Bluetooth 
keyboard and Magic Trackpad together into a single streamlined unit. And uh, you can use it on a soft surface, so you still retain your clicking functions here in the trackpad, which is really important if you like to use your computer, say, as part of a home theater setup or on your lap. I know a lot of people type in their laps, too. So, and it also keeps it from wandering off in a desktop environment. All right, there you guys have it, a look at the show floor from Macworld 2012. We didn't want to show you all the cases that were here, but we did want to show you some of the unique things that we found. And you know what? I'm just going to enjoy watching this. Back to you, Brian. All right, Brian, it looks like you're having a little uh, fun over there, but let's wrap this up with a couple more stories. In rumor news, with iPad 3 rumors pretty much dried up, 9 to 5 Mac is reporting from their own source at that factory called Foxconn that Apple is gearing up to begin production for the iPhone 5. Now, the latest rumor says we can expect a 4 plus inch display that's longer and wider than the current iPhone, and there will be no teardrop design at all. The source also says there are various sample devices floating around, and none of them have an iPhone 4 or 4S form factor, and none of the devices are final versions. Translation the only thing we know is that an iPhone 5 is coming out in 2012. And in more Apple TV news tidbits that will get your juices flowing, a recent patent application reveals Apple is flirting with the idea of a universal touchscreen controller that can control multiple devices, including a TV, a videotape player, video disc player, a stereo, a home control system, or a computer. Now, it could be the iPad or it could be something completely new, but I know some of you already busted out your wallets in anticipation. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Remember to send us your emails to theapplebyte at cnet.com. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching. And Lloyd, I love you, man.